Vietnam, the easternmost country on the Indochina Peninsula in Southeast Asia, is densely populated. Most of Vietnam's 86 million people are concentrated in its deltas and coastal plains. These lowland deltas produce more than enough rice for consumption, so farmers have surplus rice to sell in the market. However, this is not the case in uplands. About 13 million people live in the uplands. Most of them are farmers belonging to ethnic minorities. Many of them, especially the ethnic minorities, are very poor as they scratch out a living from harsh mountainous terrain with low productivity. The surplus grain from the deltas cannot be economically transported to remote upland areas. As a result, farmers in uplands have to grow their own food grains to meet family needs. Farmers in the mountainous areas grow rice along mountain slopes, in valleys, and on terraces. This constitute the rice landscapes in the mountainous areas. Aside from rice, farmers grow other crops such as tea, maize, cassava, vegetables, and other food crops. A major challenge in the northern uplands of Vietnam is to increase productivity on the less favorable sloping areas and to increase cropping intensity on terraces and in valley bottoms where possible. Our aim is to improve farmers' livelihoods through increased productivity of rice across the rice landscapes in the uplands. For sloping areas, the major constraints to agricultural improvement are low crop yields, weeds, drought, poor soils, unfavorable climate, and limited access to improved technologies and information. For terraced areas, the major problems are the lack of a reliable water supply, especially during the dry season or spring and the need for more cold-resistant, short-cycle varieties that would allow the cultivation of spring rice. To overcome these constraints, the Challenge Program on Water and Food, commonly known as CPWF, provided funding to the International Rice Research Institute to implement a project on rice landscape management for improving livelihoods through raising rice and water productivity. The project is being implemented in Laos, Vietnam, and Thailand. The project in Vietnam is a joint effort of IRI with the Northern Mountainous Agriculture and Forestry Science Institute, also known as NOMAFSI. The Thai Nguyen University of Economics and Business Administration, also known as TUEBA and CIRAD or the French Agricultural Research Center for International Development. Other partners are the University of California in Davis, Chiang Mai University, and the World Agroforestry Center. Most of the research activities were carried out in farmers' fields in two communes, Nambung and Zoiziang in Yen Bai province of northern Vietnam. Farmer participatory research was used as the main tool to implement the activities. Researchers and farmers have identified, selected, and tested different rice varieties for both spring and summer seasons. These improved varieties have clearly demonstrated higher yields than traditional varieties. Also identified were promising aerobic rice varieties that would allow farmers to grow rice during the spring season even in the absence of full irrigation. We had some trials in northern Vietnam where we tested the aerobic rice lines. They have high yield potential as compared to the other varieties that farmers, upland farmers were earlier growing. And they respond to fertilizer input management and so they have high yield potential, more weed competitiveness as compared to the earlier upland varieties. I have seen farmers very happy with this aerobic rice because you save around 40 to 50 percent of the water more water as compared to the traditional transplanted rice and as compared to the upland rice, dried direct seeded rice, you get one ton yield advantage, nearly one ton yield advantage under the similar situation. 
To increase food production during the spring season, two approaches were tested with farmers. First, new crops such as soybean and peanuts were grown on dry terraces during the cold months to provide additional food or cash while improving soil fertility. We grow peanut and BT13. The taste is not good but the yield is higher than the traditional variety. I grow maize on a sloping land. I use mulch and it captures moisture so this is good for water management. Second, water-saving techniques such as growing rice in partially flooded fields instead of in flooded fields were evaluated. This was found to be effective for expanding the spring rice area as it allows farmers to plant a larger area using the same amount of water. We introduced the saturated soil culture or SEC to the farmers in the uplands of northern Vietnam. SEC means that the soil is kept as close to saturation as possible at all times. This is in contrast to the farmer's continuous flooded practice. Based on the experiment, SEC can save about 26% of water compared to flooded condition without significant yield reduction. I like the new technique in water saving in growing rice. I sow dry seedlings and let the water saturate. It requires more labor but it saves on water. However, you save on labor in weeding by applying mulch on the field. Improved crop management technologies such as seed selection, testing seed germination, and fertilizer and weed management that are helpful in achieving better yields were also introduced in the project. So one of the alternatives that the researchers have been looking at together with farmers for the, for the upland systems is rather than burning the surface vegetation, it's retaining this on the soil surface and uh, in, in the form of a mulch. And these mulches uh, have a number of benefits. Uh, first of all, they retain uh, soil moisture, better than having a bare soil surface. Also, uh, mulch helps uh, suppress weeds. Um, and, and compared to burning, um, of course, it retains the organic matter in the, in the system. Some of the other alternatives we're looking at is, is where we can uh, intensify, or where it's best to intensify, the cropping, um, the cropping cycles, where we can take uh, crops of rice more regularly than on, than on other areas. And this is sort of something that's been undertaken in a number of areas in, in North Vietnam, where communities have get together in order to be able to uh, terrace, um, terrace areas and uh, divert streams and provide drainage so that they can retain water longer on the land and uh, they can also uh, prevent the erosion. After the, the project, we already have some um, uh, 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 technical uh, experiments uh, such some uh, new variety and new crop uh, production system. So now it's, uh, in, in the study already, already we change for example, now they, uh, some they grow aerobic rice, for example, and they, um, it's not so depend on the water. And we also we introduce them with uh, uh, new uh, water saving technology. So now they also they change nice and, uh, in some place, they also uh, munching. Finally, Researchers, together with the students who were trained through the project, studied the water institutions that regulate access to water in different communities. The aim was to identify the features of water institutions that are more conducive to increased water productivity. We studied uh, in four different communes uh, the institutions regulating water institutions in the way that our people are sharing and distributing water available water among themselves we studied uh, the once that was established we studied the impact of these different uh, institutions on on uh, the uh, spreading of uh, any innovations and we did show that there were a link between better water distribution among different type of farmers and the innovations. 
they found out that farmers are practicing water sharing in neighboring communities. The group facilitated the process of sharing knowledge about these practices with the project farmers in Soizhang and Nambung. With farmers' participation, Namafsi produced more than 20 tons of improved rice seeds during the project. These were distributed to different villages within the province and in other provinces of northern Vietnam. To improve the skills and knowledge of farmers, fact sheets in the local language were published and distributed. Training activities and study tours were also conducted for staff, students, and farmers. In four years, the project has helped farmers to identify improved rice varieties that are suited to different parts of the rice landscape. It also helped them produce good quality seeds. Farmers learned new techniques for improved crop management. The good seeds were distributed to the different sites in the area. Farmers were able to identify the intervention points that improve access to water by developing and promoting landscape management practices. The farmers and students involved in the project received training. This increased not only their skills and knowledge, but also their confidence. The project activities have thus improved farmers' knowledge of water-saving practices and have provided access to improved technologies for rice production. Rice production and farmers' livelihoods are expected to improve as farmers increasingly accept these practices. In the previous presentations, you already saw the various technologies that we have validated uh, and these technologies have clear potential for increasing rice production of the poor households uh, to enable them to reduce the period of hunger from one to three months. And that to me is a major impact, major potential impact of the technologies that have been produced, that have been generated. Together with these technologies and support from the national programs in the form of suitable policies and institutional reform for a rapid scaling up. I feel very excited that there is clear opportunity for achieving our vision of food secure households and the green landscapes in the uplands. The challenge for farmers to increase their yield continues but the knowledge and skills they obtained from the project, as well as the experience they gained through these four years, will help them identify better solutions that will result in increased harvests year after year.